Hi, I'm Miles Mack. I'm a GP in Dingwall in the north of Scotland and I'm going to talk to you today about the Dewar Report of 1912. Um, I'm part of a group who's working with the north of Scotland faculty of the Royal College of GPs and others to raise awareness of this important report which looked at conditions in the, in, of medical care in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland um, basically covering the, the Crofting counties and also Highland Perthshire um, and led to the Highlands and Islands Medical Service. Um, we believe this is extremely important um, because this, this was the first state-funded comprehensive healthcare system and an administrator from the Highlands and Islands Medi Medical Service actually sat on the beverage committee which led in the end to the formation of the NHS. So in this first video I'm going to talk about why they set it up, who they were and what they said to the government um, and I'll move on to what happened in, after that in, in further videos. In 1912 the Highlands were a very different place um, and medical care was accepted to be pretty poor in many areas. Um, they had Some things had happened to improve that. In 1845 the Poor Law Act had gave rights to medical attention to to the paupers in the parish, paid for by the by the, the parishioners in part of the parochial councils, um, and the receipt in the top left hand corner is from William Bruce, who's one of my predecessors in Dingwall, to the to the parochial board of Arry for fees for the paupers in his in in his in one part of his practice. Um, this had a very limited effect of providing care, but did provide a, a baseline. Uh, many of these doctors were often provided, or some of their funding was provided by the parochial boards, um, but often they were asked to see other people who were, poor, were too poor to be able to pay for the doctor, but not poor enough to be counted as paupers. In fact, in Papa Westray, they just had only one pauper. Um, and the parochial boards were providing a doctor to provide for them. But I think he must have been a pretty important person, um, and I suspect that without him, there may not have been a doctor on Papa Westray in Orkney at all. In 1850, there was a, the Coldstream Report was published by the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, um, and the document on the right-hand side is report from the parish of Conten, also in my practice area, um, and request for information from Reverend Downey. The question was asked, is there any complaint amongst the people of inadequacy of supply of medical aid? And he replies, not that I have heard. Indeed, some of the people, especially those in mountainous areas, have an ignorant prejudice against medical aid. And we suspect that the ignorant prejudice was elsewhere, and the patient, the, the people there were well aware um, that they weren't able to afford the medical care and just didn't seek their help. Also there were quite a lot of social problems um, and, and there was unfinished business in the Highlands after the Battle of the Braes and the Napier Commission Report of, of 1884. Um, at that time the Highland Land League a Reform Association was, was formed um, and to a certain extent this met some of the areas, of some of the needs for land reform, but there was still quite a lot of uh, continuing uh, unrest ab about land ownership. In 1885 the Highland Land League party was established and stood in the election and took all the seats in the Highlands except one in Sutherland. They were then incorporated into the Liberal Party and when, Lib when the Liberal Party in the early part of the 20th century were concerned about their majority they were very keen to be seen to be active in the Highlands to protect these voters' interests. In 1904, there was a report for the, on, for the Medical Relief Committee, which was a survey of the application of the poor law medical relief in Scotland. And this again showed a, a bad state of medical cover for the area. So in 2012, Sir John Dewar was asked to form the, the, the Dewar Committee um, he was a Liberal MP for Inverness, um, a whiskey magnate and a benefactor of Perth. Um, he 
twice been Lord Provost of Perth um, and was a leading Liberal politician, landowner and agriculturalist, um, and he'd been knighted in 1907. He enrolled um, Murdoch Beaton, um, who was born in Ardelve on the shore of Loch Duick, um, the son of an illiterate fisherman who was then sent off to be educated in Aberdeen um, with the hope that he'd join the ministry. Unfortunately, these plans were thwarted by his interest in the chanter and playing shinty. That's him in the top left-hand corner. Um, and in fact, when he returned home to his father, his father broke his chanter over his knee in disgust. So he b then became a, a teacher um, in Goldsby and then Dumfries and then became an inspector of schools and in fact had visited St Kilda with them in 1905 and 1907 and was an inspector under the National Health Insurance Commission of Scotland when he was asked to be the secretary to the committee. It's his writing which is so beautifully captured in the report that's available on the, on the website. They took it the, the committee was wide-ranging and had many high, highly prestigious people. One of these was a, was a woman, the Marchioness of Tullibardin. Um, she was very interested in local politics, particularly interested in women's problems and children's problems. And this comes through very clearly in the evidence that she took um, on behalf of the, of the committee. She later became known as the Red Duchess, uh, for her interest in the the welfare at the time of um, at the time of the Spanish Civil War, although she was in fact um, the first Scottish uh, female MP um, and the f first female um, to, to serve on the Tory government later on with a subsequent career. We were, we were very interested to see that uh, at that time. A woman was on the committee and she certainly seems to have a significant impact. So the, minute, the, the committee w was appointed on the 11th of July 1912 and this is a full list of all those people involved and they started by taking evidence by in form of surveys and then started to, to travel around the country to, to, to capture the evidence itself. They started in August in Inverness, went up to Thurso, Kirkwall, Fair Isle and Lerwick um, before taking a pause for September. Now September was the, the shooting season and for many of the doctors this was the one chance to to earn private income um, and so um, it wasn't much point trying to get evidence for them. They started again in October in Laird, moving up to Betty Hill and Rihonic in Sutherlandshire then across the Minch to Stornoway and Garenaheen and Lewis. Then they moved down to Tarbert and Harris and Loch Maddy and North Uist, before crossing back to Dunvegan and Portree on Sky, and then to Loch Kyle of Lacarche. They then took evidence in Perth, Oban, Edinburgh and Glasgow. They took evidence from medical people and also leading luminaries in the committee at that time. It appears that some of these doctors um, were well connected and we certainly seems to be a large number of them um, were members of the Caledonian Medical so Society um, and in fact in the minutes of, of their society meetings in 1911 um, there was mention of just these sort of problems and this seems to be a way that they've been able to um, organise their thoughts and prepare themselves to give evidence. So they travel quite widely. This is them in Reconic in Southernshire. They travel by, by boat and got in some trouble for um, hiring a yacht. Um, as you can imagine, with the state of the, medic of the tra transport services, this seemed a very sensible way to, to, to move along. Um, one example of the t type of person they took evidence from was Rhythm, Reverend Fotheringham in Lerwick. Um, he had started his medical studies but not completed them um, and as a result was quite often called on an informal basis to cover for Dr Imry's absence. Um, he was pretty anxious about this um, and gave evidence where um, he had actually had to operate on a patient on two occasions before they could be safely transferred and he was quite concerned about his liability for any medical mishaps that might befall him. He also 
talked about two previous doctors early demise from one was from exposure he said one was unsteady and the second was weakly um, we suspect that it may well have been from chronic ill health or even alcohol problems he like others talked about the doctors being unable to support themselves um, not being in a desirable place to practice and unable to provide um, transport he also suggested that motorboats um, would improve the efficiency of the fair isle, um, just because before, before that um, relying on sail may well mean that doctors could get there but couldn't get back um, and it was one of the examples of um, suggestion of greater use of technology um, we see this still in the present day um, today we're talking about broadband and internet in those days they were talking about the internal combustion engine and the telephones so the report amazingly enough was published on the 24th of December 1912 um, only six months after it was, it was initiated um, they talked about the state of medical services the doctors particularly had no security of tenure poor housing, poor income um, and as a result a poor access to, to appropriate transport they did talk about the telephone system um, and suggested that early forms of telemedicine the forms of telephone con contact between doctors and nurses would be of great benefit they also talked that doctors couldn't afford a locum and so went without holidays and went without continued professional development this was particularly important as this was in a time when medicine was moving fast forward very fast um, particularly with advances in radiology and microbiology um, and it was crucial that doctors were kept up to date they also talked about the inadequacy of medical attendance um, with uncertified deaths in Russia 47% of all deaths were uncertified in the 10 years up to the report the worst of all was Koigach where 81% of deaths were uncertified by contrast in the rest of Scotland the rate was only 2% so doctors and patients couldn't even get medical attention at the time of death pa uh, doctors were being called too late or not at all um, and awareness that many of the population were unable to pay the doctor's fee as a result the population resorted to what was, what was referred to as quack medicine of American manufacture and a reliance on traditional cures and superstitions and this includes um, evidence given um, of black cocks being buried at the site of people's first fit as an effort to cure their epilepsy it talks about ex a case for exceptional treatment in the area of sparse population wild landscape and a rudimentary ro road network there were still lots of black houses and this led to overcrowding um, and shared accommodation between humans and cattle and this was a particular problem with the spread of, of TB which was a considerable problem in the Highlands at that time the area was suffering from depopulation and the local roads rates were inadequate to cover the cost of doctors incomes um, the newly, newly reformed Insurance Act was really of no assistance to many of these communities with the only people being covered being the doctor, the minister and the teacher. They also talked about the provision of nurses in hospital where the total nurse, number of nurses was low um, and their organisation was chaotic. Um, there was a high reliance on philanthropic activities which wasn't too bad in Dingwall um, my health centre is just behind this present building um, where there was a, a reasonable middle class but quickly as you left the, the centres of uh, the community centres um, this fell away so the report asked for an imperial grant um, that this should be provided to enable a reorganisation of the medical services under a single organisation with patients paying a small fee for services and doctors receiving a minimum salary with additional expenses for travel. Um, this went to Parliament the following year um, and was passed and with a grant of £40,000 um, the Highlands and Islands Medical Service came into being and I'll talk about what happened in my next video. Thank you very much.